So somebody recently asked me this question, uh, Ludicrous. So I haven't played since first expansion. All right, so welcome back. <laughs> first expansion, that's, uh, what is it? Uh, Heart of Thorn. So what DPS would y'all recommend that isn't too difficult to learn? All right, so I respond back, Necromancer, Minion maybe, but less, dif but less difficult may not be the most fun class either. And welcome back. And now he's like, hey, thanks. What if, I, uh, if, what if you choose heavy armor class? So then, you know, and uh, my friend answered back to him. The first thing you need to understand is that by easy class, I'm assuming you're, you meant like a, a low intensity, you know, low intensity class, right? Where you don't press a lot of buttons and, you know, you can get, you can get away with pretty much any situation. One of the best example I have here is Necromancer. So ne Necromancer minion. So this is what I have, Death Magic, Soul Reaping, and Blood Magic. But, you know, when you start the game, you will not have all these three spec, you know, already unlocked. So when you're level one, you will have nothing technically but as you go on i suggest that you go with death magic uh soul reaping and blood magic and reason is because death magic allows you to increase uh you know the power and the the toughness of your minions right and also the reason i say that is because if you take poison nova you will have more minions with you which will increase the toughness you know uh, the carapace as we call it so the more Minions you have, the more carapace you get, the more toughness you have. So it means you have more survivability. You know what I mean? Uh, as you can see here, I have uh, Blood Fane, I have uh, Shadow Fane, uh, Bone Minions, uh, Bone Fane, and I have Charge. Uh, sorry, I have, uh, what is it? No, Flesh Golem. Sorry about that. His name is Flesh Golem. Golem. So, and also, I guess I see I have Rending. I have um, the build that I have is um, I have an axe, all right, and I have. A war horn. Now you can say why a war horn? Because I love a uh, swiftness. See, swiftness allows me to have uh, well swiftness. So basically, this locust swarm allows you to um, siphon, uh, you know, for siphoning. So you can have you can get health, you know, if you're in dire situation. And you also have swiftness, which allows you to go faster. So uh, one second, it's on cooldown right now. So basically, see, I I I, I walk. My walk is pretty regular, which is okay. Don't forget also because I have uh, this guy over here. So increase movement speed above the health threshold. So basically, I have 25% movement speed if I uh, if I am above 75% health. So I should be okay. So my, my health is full, meaning I will have 25% increased movement speed. As you can see, I'm fast enough. But if I don't take this guy and I take this guy, for instance, I will lose my 25% speed. And look, now I am slower. I walk slower. And you don't want that, right? So if you want something easy and fast, you know, you want to farm faster, level up faster, so you want mobility. Also, this guy will give you 33% movement speed uh, for 15 and 3 quarters seconds. So if I use this, I'm even faster. So meaning I can do my quest faster, I can level up faster. So mobility is important. This one, Well of Doom, will give you fear, which will CC, you know, like uh, uh, any mobs that are being a pain in the potatoes. So if you use this guy on uh, on this guy, let's say you're going to use uh, number four, Well of Doom. Boom. So now he's going to, you know, you're going to CC him, which is okay. But, you know, when, you, when you're starting, you know, when you're starting as a new player or a returning player, you like, it, like pretty much everywhere in Central Tyria. So everywhere you go in Central Tyria, uh, the mob is going to be pretty easy, you know, to kill, right? It's only if you buy a Heart of Thorn. If you go in a Heart of Thorn, or if you go in Pad of Fire, uh, the mobs, some places, not all of them, but some mobs, some places, may be a little bit more difficult. So when you say what is easy, well, like. As you said, this is a build that I would suggest you if you like easy. Uh, Speed of Shadows allow you to have swiftness when you use your F1. Death Shroud, so death, this is pretty, you know, like straightforward. So if you use this guy, boom, you get like swiftness, right? And you get protection and you get like a lot of uh, new spell that you, you can use, which makes you more powerful. What I like to do, do I like to use my F1 with my, uh, this guy over here. So I have 14 second, right? And you can see when my F1 comes up, my Death Shroud, so I'm going to use my F1. Boom. So now I have 17 seconds. Get it? So now I do my thing. I do my thing. So basically, the, the reason I say this is because it gives you perma swiftness. Now I'm get out. I'm, I, I just wait for my locust swarm. So look over here. I have six seconds left. And, and I'm going to use it again. Boom. So here we go. I still have movement speed. So I have perma perma swiftness. This is why I like uh, Warhorn and you know my F1 as well. So here I, I use F1. I have 17 seconds. Get it? 
so it gives you more uh, swiftness and you can go faster uh but you can switch whatever you want and i take this for vitality and more incoming healing just in case um this one goes for uh, life siphoning so you want to have more healing when you're doing quests against more mobs so it will help you to survive more uh this gives you uh protection was it gaining health grants a proportionate amount of bear so you get bar you you get barrier by the amount of, of health you gain conversion amount increase while full health so if you're at full health you're going to get more barrier which is a good thing um which go ahead and have vital persistence and like i said the more mobs you have the more uh, minions you have the more toughness you get so you have more survivability along with the barrier along with the life symphony you're, you're pretty much like like you're pretty you're pretty good you know for leveling up fast you know when you're 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 starting this game you understand now the other thing you need to understand just because you play an easy class all right some people they don't like uh you know like uh, minions so if you don't like minions if you don't like companions so you need to ask yourself do you like companions do you like minions because uh, if you say yes then you're gonna like this class if you say no then even if i tell you that this class is the easiest to play you're not gonna enjoy your time in guild wars 2 because you don't like minions now you're gonna say okay so what other class can i play that is easy to play well i'll be honest with you if you're returning or starting you know from level one uh I'm, i would say that every classes in guild wars 2 are pretty easy to play uh when you start it's only when you reach level i think 45 level 50 you know level 60 uh that things become a little bit complex uh like i would say i would give you an example elementalist if you play elementalist when you start you're gonna have like few spells only and like you know you're gonna have few utility spell right so it's gonna be pretty easy same thing with warrior berserker same thing with uh revenant same thing with uh you know any uh, mesmer so every class are pretty easy when you start uh but if if you ask me which one is easy to play at end game like when you reach level 80 when you reach level 80 like every class are different so things become a little bit more complex more complicated you get new skill new uh which got new spec so you have harbinger over here you have scourge and you have reaper those are the three new elite spec right so if you are going to pick these guys over here um easy would i say easy well it depends on the build so if i take reaper over here all right and i take the i don't know this build over here uh th this guy over here and i play uh minions if i keep my minions then i would say that it is also easy because reaper shroud you only have f1 you only have one uh you know like one f1 which you change into a, a reaper technically and you just go uh you know you just go uh, insane with it right everything is okay here's a pig uh, here's a boar see pretty easy all you do uh, all i did was f, uh was auto attack right so now you just have to wait six seconds like 10 seconds technically and it's, you're gonna have your uh, f1 ready so there you go so now you have your F1 ready, so your Shroud, you just turn into your Reaper. And again, you just do auto attack. Look, look how easy it is. That's easy for you. That's you can do that end game, but again, it depends on which map. If you do it in Tyria, in central Tyria, the mobs are easy. If you go to like uh Heart of Thorn or Pad of Fire, or you know, Living World Season 3, Living World Season 4, Ice Broad Saga, uh, the mobs will not be the same however the complexity of your combat skill will be the same the concept is the same you just wait for your f1 and you know you just go haywire you understand and you your mob's gonna help you assist you right but like i said if you're um if you're gonna like face a champion or a bounty or a legendary maybe this may not be the best you know the best build for you this may not be the best build for you and it also depends on you know on your build see right now i'm like uh what is it celestial viper celestial viper celestial celestial oh so this is uh celestial 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 what is this i don't even know what that is this is celestial so it depends on your build so depending on your build then you need to kind of adjust it with your trade over here. However, the complexity of a Reaper is pretty simplistic because all you need is you need life force. Once you get the life force, force you just press F1 and you're ready to go. And you press and you use a spell that you know will benefit you in, this, in the situation you're, you're at. But usually you will want to use like I don't know. I usually go with um, five and then four. No, sorry, I would go with three and then five four and then i will go with auto attack usually you know and then i would use this guy for the the swiftness i have swiftness over here and i will just do my thing right and i'm gonna wait for my f1 when my f1 is up 
I'm gonna use it again. Boom, and there you go. And I just auto attack. There you go. Simple as that. And my 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 uh, my minions are going to assist me. Very simply. This is simple as you can have as you can have in Guild Wars 2 uh, at the beginning and also in game. You understand? And to have minion, you don't have to be Reaper. So you can be Blood Magic. You can be uh, Spite. You can go with Curse. You know, you can go with whatever you want. You understand? So so yeah. So you can go with uh, Curse. You know, you can go whatever you want. But I mean, if you, I usually go with blood magic for the the life siphoning. Vam vampiric presence will help you. Uh, get, will allow your your minions to gain health when they attack, so they have more survivability. So your your minions are not gonna die. Don't forget, you can use the minion as uh, you know to to use them as spell. This one explode. This one use blindness, chill, and weakness. This one use cripple and immobilize. This one you uh, this one stability uh and what is it it knocks down this one will launch the person it and uh it, it gains stability as well which is a good thing and also all of them they have uh, a purpose as well so this would be the easiest one to play i would say this is the easiest build you can have you know to play with necromancer minion at the beginning and at the end game as well but depending for what purpose if you're doing like a meta if you're doing a meta if uh, like uh what is it like a world boss then I think this build can help you. Uh, the other one is this one you want to consider uh, Mark of Blood because Mark of Blood will give regen to your your minions, right? So you want to spam this all the time. If you, so usually I would use my, um, you know, if I'm lazy, I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna use my staff. I'm not just gonna spam this. Boom. See, and now my minions should have. Oh, they don't have regen. Uh, one second. This guy, and then number two. Boom. And then there you go. They got regen and they got vampiric vampiric aura. You see that? See that? So this, these two, the region and the vampiric aura uh, allows your your minions to to um, to survive longer during a world boss, uh, dire situation, and everything. So this would be the easiest uh, uh, class and easiest spec. I would tell you that you know, like if you want something easy, you also have another class. It's called the uh, mechanist. So another class that is easy to play. It's rifle uh, rifle mechanist. So basically, I'll show you something. If you want something easy, um, this is a build that I would suggest. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, what I have. So this is a build that a lot of people will use uh, over here. So you can go with this, this, and this, or this one over here. All right. And you want to go Marauder. You want to go Marauder or Berserker, right? And this is a rifle I have. Rifle. And this is uh, this is the, the utility spell I use. Now you're going to say, why is it easy? Because if you look at the build, all right? And if you go like uh, like regular maps, like this map over here, what is this? Is this like a speed run? I think it is a speed run. Okay. Oh well, this is a speed. So basically, you just have to press auto attack here. You just uh, auto attack, and your pet, your pet's gonna help you. See, so you can use number two, number three, number four if you want to for CC. There you go. Or number five if you want to jump, but I, you don't have to. Usually, if you have this build, you see the build that I have here. You just have to press uh, uh, auto attack over here. It's pretty easy and straightforward. And your pet is going to help you, should help you. See, I just go there. Well, I'm going to put some sound. Here, right? So there's too many people over here. And see, this one allows you to teleport. So if you like teleportation to get out of dire situation. And you, you can use your number five or jump shot to go even further. So basically, I'm just going to use my auto attack and number two. And number two, there you go. See how easy it is? Well, I, I, like I said, it depends which area you go in. If you go in Path of Fire, if you go in Path of Fire or Heart of Thorn, it's not going to be the same. So right now I am in, uh, I'm over here. Where, where am I? Uh, Dragon Rising, like uh, level, this is like level 15, 25, right? So you just press one. There you go. And your pet, you know, it's very, it's very straightforward. Look, there you go. Very straightforward. No, this is, uh, there you go. So you just press number one. It's pretty easy. See that? See how easy it is? So if you like easy, there you go. Now you can use you can use your force signet. You can use your beggar signet. You can use your all the other thing if you want. I usually use my shift signet for teleportation, and that's it. And everything else is like auto attack. There you go. So if you want something easy, there you go. Uh, the other thing I can suggest you if you want is to get this one because it's going to give you 30 percent uh instead of you're going to get 30 percent movement speed so if you want to farm faster uh this if you don't take this guy it's going to be 25 percent as you can see movement speed you can use that uh i can go with this 
as well. Uh, this will give you more uh, precision for your mix. See my, the, my mix precision is 42.79. You can see that. That's my mix precision. You can go with this one for more precision. Then you're 62.79 precision, right? But I usually go with this one, and if you're doing world boss or so, you know, if you're like overwhelmed by mobs, there are some mobs that can be overwhelming. I suggest it uh, crisis zone because it's gonna give uh, some survivability boons for your mech. You know, like this guy over here, uh, crisis zone. So if I use this, boom, you see all the boons that I get. You get alacrity, you get protection, you get stability as well, and all the shish kebab. You know what I mean? And it breaks stuns as well, right? So if you're not sure, you want to go with this. But usually, if you're doing regular farming, regular mobs. You want to go with this usually me I go with this guy over here because it gives you quickness So every time you use f1 f2 and f3 you would get quickness and I love quickness So that's that you know, and uh, you just press uh, you just press auto attack over here There you go and you see, uh, auto attack gives you, uh, every time you use explosion, because F1, uh, sorry, your, your rifle one pierces and it gives you explosion on the second shot. So every time you get explosion, you will get, uh, you will gain fury. And also range gives you aim assisted rocket, which gives vulnerability. Vulnerability does stack, you know, it gives more damage the more they are vulnerable. Get it? Uh, explosion cause vulnerability so every time you do explosion you will gain vulnerability uh, on the, the target and every time you aim, you fire a seeking rocket at the target it also gains vulnerability so the more vulnerability you get the more uh, uh, the more strike damage you apply and this one allows you to uh, heal you when you use explosion it heals you and you have a 15 percent damage increase uh, to target that is below you so whenever you fight a target that is below you you do 15 percent extra damage which is insane by the way uh this one some people will go with this me i go with this one i love because i love might for some reason and you, or you can go with this guy if you want to but it depends on your build uh this one will give you some more stack of damage so yeah so there you go um but this is pretty much the build if you want something easy this is what i use usually like with this 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 build and i just press one uh auto attack right here there you go see it's very easy but again you don't get mechanics to get mechanics you need to be level 80 and you need to unlock it so it's going to take you some time to get uh mechanics you understand you don't get that from the start so don't, you know, like, you, you don't get your, like, you, you're not going to get this when you get level 80. You really need to unlock it, and it's going to cost you, you you're going you're gonna to need hero points to unlock it and to get all the traits over here, you understand? So it's going to take you some time. But if you want something easy for end game, this is, mechanics is, like, one of the easiest, because pretty much if you just do one, you can get away with everything. There you go. You have nothing else to do, you know what I'm saying? So this is one build I would suggest you, so strength. Tactic and Berserker if you want something easy with rifle. So I have rifle and I have great sword. All right, so rifle and this is uh, oh, Sorry, this is rune of surging. Uh, sorry. This is um, you can go uh, Berserker or Marauder or whatever you want I go Berserker. I have some Celestial as well. So anyway, so this is the build that is pretty easy So right now I am in a uh, bloodstone. What is it? Bloodstone? Fan. So basically here, you basically just, it's pretty much like mechanics. You want to use like you know like one, two, and three and four maybe. So basically you're gonna press auto attack with this guy. See, pretty easy, right? If they come too close, you can use number five. Whoop! And I missed it. This, this is an easy build, but it depends where you where you go. So here, this is a level 80 zone that I am in right now. So. There are some mobs that will be different. See, I'm gonna go just my auto attack here. It's pretty, it's pretty strong, right? Pretty easy, right? You want to use number two? It's fine too. So let me fight this number two over here. It's pretty easy, right? Number three. And nope. See, this guy knocks me down. Number four. Number three. Number two. And then F. F you can use Berserk over here. And then F1, F1, this guy, boom, there you go. See how much damage I did? This is very easy. Berserker is like easy mode. Uh, the beginning, uh, w I mean, once you unlock it, it's pretty easy for pretty much everything you do. There we go. So now you have more mobs. So you want to use number two. Number three, uh, you can use this over here, which gives you adrenaline and improved precision and ferocity. Like this, and I'm gonna use F2, boom, and then F1. Boom, there we go. Number four, number two. There we go, I can use my this over here. Jump on this guy, number three. Boom, 
See, see how easy it is? That's very. That's as easy as you can get with a warrior. There you go. Number two. Number four. You want to use this, and then you can use this for precision. You can use F1 right now. Boom. Whoop. You need to dodge roll that, and then you can use five to knock him down. Boom. And then just auto attack if you want to. This is how easy it is. And you just auto attack. Right? There we go. You can switch also to uh you can switch to your greatsword. If you switch your greatsword, you have rush over here, which allows you to go to go up to them, like it's number five. Boom. And you just auto attack. You can use number two if you want to. And you can use your F1 as well. F1 gives you a burst arcing slice. I'll show you in a few seconds. Like this. Boom. There you see, it's very easy. Number two. There you go. Well, number one. There you go. Then you use number five to rush. Like this. Boom. And then you just auto attack. And F1. Boom. See how easy it is? Then you can switch to your gun. And do the same thing. Number three. And number two. Auto attack. See? This is this is easy. This is like an easy build. Um, but again... If you're fighting easy mobs like this, then this is good. But if you go on different map like Heart of Thorn or Pad of Fire, where mobs they're gonna CC you, they're gonna burn you, they're gonna AOE you, you cannot play like that. You will have to to to, to use pretty much different spell. You're gonna have to play with your builds. You're gonna have to make sure that your build fits, you know, where you go and everything, etc. etc. So uh this is one build. This is like core mesmer. So basically I have inspiration, dueling, and domination. Uh, but you can use pretty much whatever you want. And as you can see, I have uh which I have here, I have staff, I have scepter, pistol, staff, right? I have Viper, but you don't have you don't you don't have to have Viper, but I'm just choosing Viper Viper for this example. This one celestial. Uh yeah, so basically here it's very simplistic. What you want is to create clones, very simple as that. So when you create clones, I'm gonna show you, just use auto attack over here. Oops. So it's gonna create clones, so you have a clone over here. Very simple as that. There we go. See how easy it is? There we go. You can use your pistol over here, but see how easy it is? Very easy. And the, with the clones, you can pretty much uh, do any content because the clones are they're kind of like tanking, taking aggro from you. So it's very useful against, you know, like, uh, you know, like, you know, like elite or again, like when there's a lot of uh, mobs around you. You know, so this is, uh, and this is the build that I use. You can check pretty much, you can take whatever you want, but this is what I use. Um, it depends on the situation. Sometimes we'll take Shatter Concentration, you know, uh, to remove boons from on hit. You know, when you Shatter, uh, sometimes we'll take Evasive Mirror, you know. So sometimes we'll take Deceptive, Deceptive Evasion too. So it really depends how you want to play this. Uh, let me see. I can use this one for cloning. Create clone and position one. Okay, so when you dodge, so when I dodge, I create a clone. See that? There you go. I create a clone when I dodge. See that? Then I can use it. I can use my F1 uh, to kill the mob. I usually use my F1 when the mob's almost dead, like a 30%. Oh, boom! See, I create a clone. I create a clone when I. When I dodge, well, I like this guy. I really love this guy over here. And uh, what else? So you keep going. It's very easy. Dodge roll over here. There we go. There we go. Simple as that. Dodge roll if you want to. Number two if you want to block. There you go. Number two, what it means, like when you block, when you counter a block, it will uh, generate two clones. So if you use number two at the right time, and if you have no clone like this, I'm going to use it right now. Boom, see, I, 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 just, I just did two clones over here. You can dodge roll to have a third one. See that? Now you have nothing to do, you just have to wait. So that's why if you can use your two properly against mob, you don't. You, you pretty much need to do nothing. Look, it's. I'm going to go on this guy over here. I'm going to use number two when he attacks me one second. Whoop. Okay, he attacked me. Right now. There you go, I got two clones. I'm going to dodge roll right now. Now I have three clones. Now I'm going to stop attacking and wait till my clones do their job. Look, I have nothing to do. Look at that. <laughs> this is how easy it is. You want something easy, then Mesmer is good for you too. So I would say that, like I said, every class are easy. 
I, I, as long as you have the proper build and you know you use the proper whatever you know what i'm saying so uh now you're gonna say why am i taking uh decoy uh because decoy breaks down and also if you're really in, after if you're really in deep trouble you can use this and just run away you can just run away a lot of mesmer they like uh stealthing because when they're in deep trouble they just run away i mean you don't want to fight you know something that you cannot fight right uh the other thing is they, they like to take mass invisibility because this one gives you uh i think gives you six seconds of stealth let me calculate yeah six seconds of stealth boom there you go so you got six seconds if you want more stealth i believe there's a there's a build that gives you more stealth which is chaos is it increase yeah this one see this one so if I am to play Chaos, this is the build that I would take, by the way. This is what I would take. Uh, this one gives you more stealth. So if I use this guy, instead of 3 seconds, it's 4 seconds I have. So like, look at this. So you have way more stealth. So you have way more time to run away. You understand? This one was 6 seconds. Now it's 9 seconds. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's good for World v. World, to be honest with you. A lot of uh, players in World v. World, they will take this, this build over here. Uh, because it allows them to stealth longer. Like 9 seconds is a lot, bro. Look, look boom see and you gain boons at the same time this is really for evasive maneuver if you don't want you just want to run away right because you need to run away sometime in world v world you understand when you're in deep trouble so yeah so it really depends what you want to do and how you play you understand one of my favorite classes is will bender like this is the build that i have over here uh you can go with this one too so this is my class for will bender uh, this is my build sorry this is my build for will bender as you can see all right and the reason i love will bender is because well is it easy it's easy once you get acquainted with your rotation and how to use your spell it's not easy as in like mechanics or like warrior berserker rifle you know it's not as easy as that because will bender you need to use more spell in order to be uh, effective so you cannot just do auto attack with will bender you're not going to be effective all right but when I say easy, what I mean is that once you understand the rotation, everywhere you go looks so easy because you never die and you do a lot of bursty damage. Look, I'm going to show you. Right now I'm in uh, Bloodstone Fen, but I'm going to go in somewhere else, uh, you know, like uh, somewhere that is more, like, would be easy for you to, you know, let's say you were, like, uh, in an easy, like, uh, map. So basically what I would do, see, I... F1, F2, F3, they all have range. This one has 600 range. This one has 450 range. This one has 800 range. So what I'm trying to say is that you have a lot of mobility. This symbol of blade has 600 range mobility. This one has 750 range mobility. This has 900 range. This has 1200 range. Like seriously, this has 600 range. You have so much range, you don't even need to mount. You don't even need to mount. Look, boom, look. I don't even have to mount. All right, boom. Now, let's say I want to go this guy. I'm just going to use this guy over here. Boom. See? F1. There you go. Boom. He's dead. Well, not yet, but he's going to be dead. See? Now he's dead. Where do I want? I want to go to this guy over here. F1. Boom. F2. Boom. I'm going to use this guy. E. Boom. Oh, I'm not there yet. I'm going to use F2. Boom. I'm there. Then I'm going to use my spell. Look. See the mobility? Oh, they're going to knock you down. All right. Can you use your uh, F3. There we go. F1. There we go. Now I want to go to this guy over here. I'm going to use F1. And I'm going to use number 2. Boom. See, I'm already there. He's already dying. See, well, now he's going to knock me down. Then I'm going to use this guy over here. This guy uh, breaks stun. Judge judge intervention. Now I want to go, let's say, to this guy over here. F1. Then number 2. Boom. See, I'm already there. So, when I say easy... When I say easy, world bender is easy. Like this to me is easy mode. This is really easy because I don't even have to mount. I just have to use this. Then number two, boom. And then uh, this guy here, E. There, I'm already there. Look, you like easy? That's how easy it is. You cannot have more easy than that. You want to go this guy, F1, and then two. So you're already there. Boom. There you go. You want to go to this guy over here? You want to use number five, advance this guy. Boom. Whoop. Okay, F1. Boom. There you go. I'm already there. Now I'm just using auto attack with this guy. There you go. I want to go there. I'm going to use this guy over here. Judge intervention. Boom. I'm already there. Boom. Then F1. You want to use your F1 all the time. F1 over here. Why? Because of this guy. Virtue skill 1 is renewed when you kill a foe. For farming, this is beautiful. When you, you kill a foe, your F1 is reset all the time. This is fucking insane. So I'm going to use F1 right now. Boom. Now I'm going to use number 2. Sword number 2. Boom. 
Hey, there, I'm there. See, it's gonna reset when he dies. Look at my F1. Look, look at my F1. See, F1 is reset, so I can use F1 again. Boom. And then number two again. Boom. Oh, I'm not there yet. Number E. Here. Flash combo. Boom. I'm there. Now he's gonna die. Look at my F1. Look at my F1. F1 is renewed. Again, F1. Boom. Number two. Boom. See how easy it is? You want easy? There you go. Ah! Why they keep... <laughs> they keep okay, there you go. See, my F1 is, is reset. Again, let's go there. Boom. Oh, I'm not there. My F2. How about F2? Boom. Whoop. Not the right way. My number. My sword number two. Boom. I'm there. This is, this is how easy it is. You want easy? There it is. Uh, this is my build by look carefully. You can you can switch whatever, but this is the build that I take for the what I have. Uh, and what I use is this is what I use. I use Marauder and I use Rune of Speed. Rune of Speed is a little bit expensive. Also, Will Bender. Oh, by the way, uh, Will Bender is something you unlock when you get level 80. You don't get that from the start. So I'm just saying. So you want easy, but you need to unlock it to get it to get it there. You know what I mean? Uh, and this is what I use: uh, cleansing energy. This is for world v world, by the way. Uh, and this is uh, the the great sword. I got uh, rage and I got hydromancy. All right. Uh, so there, that's my build technically. But I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. The fact that you play an easy class in Guild Wars 2 doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be more fun. So if you're saying, I want to have fun in this game, and I tell you play Mechanist Rifle 1, and then at the end you're like, man, this is boring, I'm killing everything and there's no challenge. Well, there you go. Because the thing is, what what is easy for you doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be more fun at the end. So if you want to have fun, I highly recommend that you play a class that is not easy. Because when you play a class that is not easy, you're going to self-challenge. You're going to impose a challenge to yourself to learn to play, you know, to learn different mechanics, different combo, which will allow you to stimulate your brain, which will allow you to uh, to to try to challenge yourself, to try to figure out how to do this, how to do that, how to go faster, how you know what I mean? so easier doesn't mean better easier means that i mean if you just log in once a week and you just want to farm regular mobs then maybe easy is good for you but if you want to have fun in world v world in raids if you want to have fun in fractals tier 4 or tier 3 tier 2 you know you don't want to play an easy class because you're not going to have fun at the end and although also you're not going to be productive in world v world or raids if you just press uh, you know, like auto attack. You're not going to be productive and nobody's going to invite you in their guild. Nobody's going to invite you, well, not in their guild, but nobody's going to invite you in their raids if you're just going to do auto attack in raids, you understand? So if, you're, if your question is, how can I have fun in Guild Wars 2 and still be invited in guilds, in raids, in World v. World squad, then I highly recommend that you play difficult class so that you learn to be better at every classes and that's when a, when a guild or when a squad or when a commander asks you, can you play that class? Because I need you. I need a class. I need Will Bender. I need a Firebrand. I need a Herald. If you answer yes, because you've been learning how to play these classes, because you are not afraid to learn, right? Uh, you will be invited pretty much to every guild. You will be invited to every squad. You will be invited to every race. Everybody wants to have you in their group. Therefore, you're going to have fun because people want to invite you and you're going to be productive for every kind of features you choose. Do you understand? That's why when you say, okay, I want something easy, but easy at the end of the day, are you going to have fun if you're just going to be by yourself in the open world pressing rifle one? That's the question you need to ask yourself. If the answer is yes, then okay, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you cannot complain after that. Oh, why is it that Gills doesn't want to invite me? Why is it that raids are not inviting me? Why is it that world v world squad are not inviting me? Well, that's because you don't play anything else then rifle one or auto attack you need to do more than that so that's why i want to emphasize on yes it's fun to do to have an easy class but don't forget at the end of the day if you want to be invited in the fun stuff let me say that again if you want to be invited in the fun stuff at the end of the day you need to do more than auto attack and to play easy class that's all i have to say i hope that this helps you if it does please like and subs thanks for watching welcome back to every new player and welcome to all new players and uh if you have any questions leave in the comments somebody's gonna answer to you i will try to answer the best that i can thanks for watching see you in my next exit cheers